This is going to be an epic episode of TFL Talking Trucks because we're doing basically an annual wrap up. Yeah, but it's a little bit more than that because we're going to be talking about the good and the bad. Yes, but it's been one heck of a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for all of us, guys. Guys, I'm Andre Smirnoff with the Fast Lane Truck and Nathan Adlin. And in this, on this show, uh, we're talking about the unforced errors and the home runs in the truck industry in 2020. It's been a very long year, but uh, we're going to go brand by brand. And this is focused on pickup trucks and big SUVs. We're not talking about cars. Nope. We're going to be doing something similar with cars on TFL Car or well, TFL Talk for cars, but that's different. It's going to be a different format as well. Thank you for joining TFL Talking Trucks podcast. If you love pickup trucks or big full-size SUVs, if you love trailering, towing, and going off-road, this is the right place to be. Together, we can make this podcast the most popular ever. So let's hit it right off the bat. So we're going to go brand by brand uh -huh. in no huge particular order, but kind of the stuff that uh, sticks out for us uh, because we've, we've driven a lot of trucks this year and we've tested them and we've done lots of news. So let's start with a brand that's kind of close to me, to my heart, is the GMC Hummer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What? 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 Right. Go ahead. No, no, no. He's, he's, go ahead. Talk about their home run. So, uh, well, let's start with unforced errors. Oh, that's even better. That's what I wanted so, to talk about. So, we're going to do unforced errors and then, of course, home runs. So, uh, if you don't know, GMC has brought back the Hummer nameplate, right? This is uh, initially they unveiled this um, GMC Hummer truck, EV all electric truck, uh, new design, but you know, it draws kind of some parallels to the older Humvees and Hummers of the past. And then they basically chucked it full of technology, right? Four wheel drive technology, just digital infotainment technology, all kinds of stuff, suspension. And then they announced the price. Here we go. Yes, so uh, we think at TFL Truck that one of the unforced errors that they came out with this launch edition at first, at 112,000 bucks. What do you think? I think it's ridiculous. I think it's absolutely, I, I know that you guys want to start the unfor, you, you want to bring in the people who are, you know, willing to lay down tons of cash and buy these incredibly expensive trucks, but you're losing a chunk of people by doing that. And what you need to do is also announce what the base price is going to be, which we're still assuming is going to be astronomical. It's just too expensive. It's ridiculous. I mean, it, no, really, it is. Especially when you compare it to a lot of the other trucks that we're going to be talking about mm -hmm. on this list. Only a few of them hover in that territory. A lot of the other ones, which still have advanced tech, are nowhere near this price. So let's unpack this just a little bit more, right? Mm -hmm. So the GMC Hummer, like I said, is kind of the technological tour de force, yes, right? Yes, it is. Uh, for GM and GMC specifically, as far as trucks. It has height adjustable suspension. It has active suspension from ZF, so the shocks kind of respond to what the truck is doing. It's got four-wheel steering. It's got up to 1,000 horsepower with three motors, three electric motors. Which is a... Well, well, uh, yeah. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, electric motors are very powerful. We know that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, interior for five, some might argue, you know, it's maybe a little bit smallish uh, as far as kind of... It's like a mid-sized truck in terms of size. Uh, well, but it's also as wide as a Humvee or a Hummer. It is really wide, be. Yeah. It's really wide. So it's kind of a weird animal. It's got a five-foot bed, mm -hmm. right? So it's not a very big bed yep. for, for this pickup truck. But um, it's supposed to be very quick, three seconds, zero to 60 times. We have full videos on TFL Truck and TFL Off-Road and TFL Now about you know, all the specs uh, on this particular truck. The price, when I heard that, I mean, it's immediately, I mean, it's a toy for wealthy people. Um, it's a really you know, capable toy, <laughs> right? But you know, they said in about three years from now, they're gonna have a base model at around you know, 79 or 80 grand. That's still very expensive. That's, that's my point. I mean, it's, it's, you know, and we still don't know for sure whether or not that's going to hold. You know, we're a couple years down the line. My problem with the vehicle is this. When you are a person who needs a pickup truck, you don't want to spend 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 thousand dollars in order to really crack this, this unusual thing, which is known as EV, to make an electric vehicle, a truck that's accessible to everybody, General Motors has f 
fallen off the horse and other people are going to take up the reins and run away with it. Now I know that they're going to build a Chevy Silverado EV, we, we heard about it, but in terms of this truck in general, I mean, even $50,000 is extremely steep, but come on, why not make a, a base model like that that some people can actually afford. I just think the price is astronomical. So obviously we are not in the boardroom of General Motors, so no. we, we don't know everything that they considered. Uh, but, but let's talk about the home run here. Well, uh, it's the other uh, side. I, I think the home run for the Hummer brand is that it's back. I mean, mm -hmm. come on, dude, they've, they've been gone since like 08, 09. I, I, I love the fact that they came back yeah. with, I mean, they were one of the, they were the villain. Back in the day when, when hybrids were really kicking in, yes. you know, in the, uh, in the mid-2000s to around 2008, Hummer was absolutely vilified as excess, as something that they get terrible mileage, nobody ever takes them off-road, blah, 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 blah. Um, even though they built some really capable off-road vehicles, right? Mm -hmm. and, but yeah, they, they got terrible mileage, they're really inefficient, and all of a sudden they, they, they bring the name back with this you know, tree-hugging green EV vehicle, I, I really do think it's pretty funny um, considering where they were and where they are now. But everybody's really hot about off-roading, overlanding, mm -hmm. doing all this stuff. You know, look at you know the coming back of the brands. Of the Bronco brand mm -hmm. is coming back, right? Uh, that's very kind of outdoorsy, capable brand. Right. Jeep brand is huge. Yeah. Right. Everything that Jeep does is seems to be like just a home run. Yeah, they sell everything. Uh, and so I think for the Hummer brand to come back in this kind of off-roady way with the electricity i think it was a home run it just i wish that they can capitalize on that right and add add to it right and make it more affordable affordable is the key now there is a rumor that they are building other versions of the hummer uh that'll be evs as well and in fact they're saying that they'll all be evs so maybe there'll be a less expensive version down the line but as far as we know between 80 and 112 thousand dollars is a lot of money to spend on a pickup so going alphabetically mm -hmm. in this case, so let's uh, keep going. Let's okay. move on from uh, Hummer to Chevrolet. Mm -hmm. uh, Chevrolet and GMC to some extent and GM. And uh, this is a one unforced error that we came across uh, really personally this year. Oh, he did um, indeed. Yes, so our producer and uh, videographer and also uh, presenter at TFL Bike Alex uh, purchased a Silverado 1500. Yep. Right. It had an eight-speed uh, automatic transmission, mm -hmm. and he had huge problems with the eight-speed transmission. There have been now. Now, bear in mind that we are not one of those organizations that can keep track of thousands of people throughout the United States who have problems. However, we did videos on this truck and this problem, and we had a lot of feedback from an awful lot of people who said they had the same type of problems. I know somebody personally who also had the same type of problem. Um, and, and then on top of that, there were additional issues. And there's a weird irony about that because, well, frankly, other transmissions from General Motors seem to be a lot more stout. Yeah, so basically the issue had to do with kind of rough shifting, mm -hmm. just, just uncomfortable driving, and, and sometimes just kind of surprising shifting. Yes. Um, this was a brand new truck, a 2020 model, and uh, Alex ended up just getting rid of it. I mean, it, it was he, in the he, shop for a very long time. Well, he lemoned it. Uh, yeah. And, and he actually replaced it with a Ram, uh, basically the equivalent Ram. Yeah, Ram Rebel yep. he, that he purchased. He uh, originally purchased a Silverado four-wheel drive truck. Um, so that's, this kind of goes to, you know, obviously, you know, like you said, we can't track of every single issue, every recall ever made. Right. Because every manufacturer has recalls, exactly. every manufacturer has issues. But this seemed to kind of hit a vein uh, this year. Um, so we wanted to call out uh, this particular one. But on the flip side, uh, for home runs, uh, for Chevrolet and GMC, uh, well, there are several things actually. Yeah. Uh, one that we want to call out is the six uh, cylinder straight six diesel engine. That turbo diesel is one of our favorite. In fact, it is my favorite General Motors engine. Uh, we talked about it in another podcast. Yeah, yeah, and, and dude. So, uh, and in the context of brand new SUVs, uh, GM just unveiled the they redesigned all of their f uh, full size SUVs. I'm talking about Chevy Tahoe, Suburban, Yukon, Yukon Excel, Escalade, Escalade, yeah. Escalade ESV long wheelbase edition. Yeah, they, it's a brand new platform, independent suspension, still truck based. 
this engine, the six liter, uh, six liter, <laughs> six cylinder uh, diesel, uh, three liter, um, is actually coming to all of those. That is correct. Even Cadillac, right? Yeah, and we have actually uh, tested recently the Tahoe diesel. Uh, the video is on TFL truck. Uh, we did a fuel efficiency run. It was very impressive. And it's made it to a 10-speed automatic. Right. 10-speed, not an 8-speed. Um, and 10-speed is just, it's like butter. So it has such close gear spacings, especially with the diesel. Um, it does shift, but it's almost imperceptible. You can barely notice how it's shifting. Um, and it's always keeping that engine in the kind of in, either in the meat of its power or efficiency, right? Yep. Whatever you're trying to do. Uh, beautiful, beautiful powertrain. I agree with you 100%. You know, there's other competitors out there that have a similar setup, but you feel diesels, you know, kind of fall off a cliff after you go over, let's say, 4,000 RPM in some cases. Or, and you can really feel, especially when you're going in commuting, right? But this one, you can't feel the loss. You don't feel that type of jarring sensation when you're going through traffic. It is just as good, if not better, than any gas engine. And then on top of that, you get incredible efficiency and pretty, uh, well, the, the towing numbers are decent too. Yeah, so I got almost 28 MPG MT. <laughs> this is a high country, big Tahoe, big heavy SUV, right? Yeah. And then I got 12.1 with a trailer, which is about 7,000 pounds. That is really impressive across the board. Yeah, really, really good powertrain. So bottom line is that the 10 speed, com combined with almost any engine from General Motors works really well. And then also uh, another just home run finishing up Chevrolet and GMC, mm. right? And we've uh, done a video with this recently. It's the GMC Yukon 84 Ugh, and the 84 design in general. Yeah. I think the 84 off-road design with GMC, that just boom, home run. We're just talking about design, mind you. The, nothing's perfect, but it, it, the design itself is really cool. And, you know, it's subjective, right? You right. know, you might say, oh, I really hate 84. You know, right, why, right, right. Why are you talking about this? Well, uh, just I think we agree in the office here at TFL that yeah. the 84 design is just spot on. It has real presence. It reminds me a lot of when the, the very first time I saw the Ram Rebel. And the very first time I saw that with its first generation, I was like, whoa, this is a really good idea. It's such a buildup over a regular truck. It's kind of the same thing, but even higher end. So... That's, that's, I especially like the pickup version of the AT4 setup. Ugh, love it. Let's switch gears completely, yes. right? So let's move on to another brand, mm -hmm. another manufacturer. Uh, this time um, it's going to be Nikola. So it was a, kind of a big news this year, right? Oh, yeah. All, all, on all fronts. Um, Nikola, uh, well, where do we start? <laughs> Can you, start, uh, you want to start with the good news? Is there good news? So let's introduce the company, right? Okay. It's, a, it's a new company that's been around for about five years, mm -hmm. but they were um, mainly um, under radar. Right. Um, they started, they announced their semi-truck initiative. They were going to build um, basically an electric truck, maybe with a turbine or a fuel cell kind of support to generate uh, electricity for the electric motor. They had very nice sketches. Yes, and a couple of rolling chassis. Literally rolling chassis. <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. And then, and then uh, this year, very recently, about a year ago, uh, they announced the Badger pickup truck, mm -hmm. and it was you know kind of a big news, big announcement. Um, actually, I can actually, f uh, if you're watching this on TFL Talk, uh, there's going to be a video with lots of different images and video. Um, and if you're listening to us, thank you for listening. Yeah, we appreciate it. Uh, the bet now we, we should preface that the, the, the Badger was going to be done in partnership um, with General Motors. Am I correct? Well, initially they just announced design. Right. Um, I, I'm kind of showing it here. Yeah, there it is. Uh, the design of the Badger, which looks kind of cool. Right. Looks like a cross between it, Ford and General Motors uh, design. Yeah, it's kind of a co uh, collaboration of designs in, in there. It looks pretty aggressive. Uh, and then they said, we're going to partner with a major manufacturer to build it. Mm -hmm. And then finally, there came an announcement that they're going to partner with General Motors. Um, but the announcement was kind of strange. It kind of rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Because the announcement said that they're going to use this design, but the running gear is going to be GM. Right. You know, their battery OTM systems with their electric motors. And then the trucks will have their fuel cell technologies. Yeah, so, so it's a combination of, of a few things. Yeah, so 
Long story short, <laughs> the CEO is ousted. He, he the CEO is not, of Nikola. Of Nikola. Yeah. Um, ousted. Badger canceled. Yeah, the whole thing completely just fell apart. Um, it, if you guys want to review it, we ha do have some information on tfltruck.com. Yeah, tfltruck.com. Um, exactly. And it, it, it explores the ridiculousness of this whole thing yeah. and how it all fell apart. You can't make this stuff up. It's I mean, crazy, including, I'm going to just tantalize you with a little thing. They had uh, rolling chassis filmed going downhill. Of semi-trucks. Of semi-trucks with no power. There, there was no engine in them, there was no motivator in them, nothing. They were just rolling downhill. And then when they were brought to task about this, saying these aren't really real, they're like, well, nobody said they were. You know, you, you guys just assumed that they had an engine in it or, <laughs> you know, a transmission or something. No, they were just rolling down a damn hill. The thing is, is that this is kind of a con. And uh, once again, go to tfltruck.com and you guys can see the whole story about it. It's a bit of an expose, I guess you could say. Uh, let's move on. I don't want to give these guys too much credit. The thing is, good news, General Motors has moved on and they're doing their own thing. Yeah, hence the Hummer. Um, and also, by the way, Nikola is moving on too. They're focusing on semis. Yeah, they got, so, rid, no, they got rid of their guy. Yeah. And they're still a company and they're still doing stuff and they're focusing on semis. And, you know, I do hope that they manage to recoup, but um, there's some real sketchy stuff going on initially. Let's move brands. Yes. Let's move. Uh, this is a big show, dude. Uh, it we, is we're going to keep going. By the way, I just want to have a little plug. Please. Um, TFLbids.com. It's our brand new auction site that TFL started. Mm -hmm. uh, we have several vehicles uh, on auction. <laughs> Including, we just mentioned Hummer. Whose Hummer is going to be on that auction site? My personal Hummer is there now. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to bid a couple, a couple bucks on that. <laughs> Well, it's not a. It's not a, supposed to be like a GoFundMe page. No, uh, no. I, it just I, 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 if I win the bid, I'm going to do horrible things to it and we'll have you watch. So, guys, uh, so basically, TFLbids.com is a place where enthusiasts, guys and gals, can sell and buy vehicles, mainly trucks. You know, we kind of want to focus. We have a few cars on there as well, yeah. but mainly trucks. Yeah, so that's kind of what we want to do, and my Hummer's there at no reserve. I'm very scared, but thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> you guys, he's taken excellent care of it, and he's actually done some interesting updates. Let's move on to the next one on to our list. Ford. This is, is Ford. Ford. So Ford, and we, once again, we're going to be talking about uh, unforced errors and home runs. Okay. So let's start with an um, kind of an unforced error, because, but... Mind you, this is in the context of 2020. Which, so keep COVID and all the delays in mind before which, we get started. Which, which has been a huge, hugely challenging year. Um, of course, I'm focused on the F-150, the brand new truck, right? Right. Uh, that's what we're focused on right here. And Ford, recently, they actually uh, went back to monthly reporting of sales. And in the November report of sales, F-150 sales were down in a huge way. What, 40? Like 45 plus percent uh, um, compared to previous year. And it's compounded with several things. Uh, I don't want to really call it unforced error, but <laughs> this is their most fit popular and the biggest selling vehicle that they have. Not only that, it's one of the most popular and biggest selling vehicles in the country. And also the profit center for them. Yes. A huge financial thing for them. Obviously, it's a model changeover, right? They're up updating their plans to build a new truck. Yeah. A couple of supplier plans were hit by weather and bad, you know, tornadoes and etc. Yep. And also it's the year, right? So everything is combining, and these trucks are barely reaching the market right now. And the, this, this November, December is when people buy a lot of trucks. So, so keep in mind that a lot of people expected these vehicles to be in dealerships a, a while back. And only now are some dealerships getting a couple of them that they could put up front. And you know, dealership lots are just not full yet. Now, we're not saying that Ford is completely to blame for this. They were very enthusiastic about bringing this vehicle out. But if you look at Ford in general, in terms of unforced errors, they have a lot of vehicles that have, that have been pushed back because of COVID, because of 2020, because of everything that's going on, and it's hurting them. Yeah, and obviously, once again, we're not a part of Ford uh, Board of Directors. <laughs> not so even we, close. <laughs> we're way far from we're there. <laughs> Far removed. We're, we're as far from that as possible, probably. <laughs> but but it, 
Uh, maybe they were trying to do too much at the same time. Yeah, I they're think launching the Mach E uh, Mustang SUV electric. Uh, they're launching the Bronco Sport, then the Bronco. Uh, they're working on other projects like the updated Explorer, Expedition, etc. Uh, they're doing maybe too much. Yeah, you know, one of the problems is that they've had events uh, that journalists have attended, and then there's nothing. Uh, so you have this vapor that just sits there with nothing to fill it. Uh, that's including the F-150, that's including the Bronco. It's a lot of vehicles that are out there. Now, the Bronco Sport is in dealership, so they managed to get that one out, but that's not a truck. What we're referring to primarily is the F-150, their bread and butter. That vehicle really is not available yet, and it's just perhaps they should have focused more manpower on that vehicle and then pulled back on some of the other ones because it's their biggest seller. Um, we know that there are supply chain issues, you name it. Everything that could have gone wrong pretty much has mm -hmm. gone wrong. But yes. at the same time, the fact is that their most profitable, the, the most important vehicle is the one that's not really in dealerships yet, and that's a problem. Let's talk about the home run. Yes, which is speaking of that truck. Uh, Ford home run is the F-150. Uh, we just recently uh, tested the heck out of the new F-150 hybrid. Right. We, yeah. And, and we, we want to do more. Obviously, we had a limited ed, ed, edition model, which is the highest priced and the most luxurious and the most optioned one. But we got a taste of this new hybrid system. Oh, big time. Yes. You drag raced it. I, I towed with it. it. I towed with it. Yeah. Uh, we have all the videos on TFL Truck, most recently in the I Gauntlet with the F-150 Hybrid. If you haven't seen it, guys, check it out on TFL Truck. You powered two trailers, big trailers off of it. Yes. We charged a, a Tesla off of it and a BMW i3. Yes. And Tommy and Case powered the welder yep. with it. <laughs> so what, what else can we say? I mean, we tested the, the Dickens out of it. I yes. said Dickens, damn it. And, um, but, 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 and the thing is, that truck has fixed every fault that was in the F-150, and then on top of that, an incredible amount of technology. Incredible. Yeah, and I was, I was a little skeptical, right? It's very, it, it, it is a complicated system, right? It's incredibly complicated. I mean, so it's a, combining the new powertrain is combining the 3.5 liter twin turbo uh, EcoBoost Which V6, has been modified. Which has been updated from previous generations already. Powerful engine, very yeah. powerful. Then um, the transmission itself, the unit that they're using, it's a 10-speed mm -hmm. that they've had before, yep. but they had to modify it to uh, put an electric motor within it, uh, basically. 1.5 kilowatt battery in there too, yeah? 1.5 kilowatt hour battery, and the motor is like 35 kilowatts, which Something is about like 40, 45 horsepower. Right. So all that together, the transmission is modular. Mm -hmm. uh, the new Ford Explorer hybrid is using a very similar setup. Yeah, within so the Explorer the, um, hybrid. Yes, the Lincoln is doing that as well. Lincoln has a similar setup yeah, as well. Yeah. So, so yeah, so I was a little skeptical. I'm like, is it going to be smooth? Is it going to be like jerky, inefficient, blah, blah, blah. It, it was really smooth. Uh, I really enjoyed driving this truck, um, not just because it was a luxury truck, but because the powertrain was really good. Over 700 miles, almost like 750 miles range on a full tank. That is better than a lot of diesels out there, which is one of the things I love about diesels is their long range. This thing has ridiculous range, especially if you drive it in the city. Yes, uh, hybrid is really good for city driving. Regen braking, I felt the regen braking felt pretty good. I was also worried about that. Yeah, I was too. Um, and, and then interior is updated across the board. That's always been my biggest gripe with F-150, and this new interior is so much better. Yes, so they're really hitting the design. I think the powertrain, I, I think we'll have to wait and see how reliable this powertrain will be in the long term. Right. But the EcoBoost you know, has proven itself in many ways since it's been out for 10 years in various iterations. Yeah, they, they've definitely updated it and fixed small flaws and everything yeah. else along the lines. But uh, this this truck is is a leap forward in terms of technical know-how. And they put, it's their moonshot in my mind because they really put a lot of time and energy and million, billions of dollars of design into this truck. And it really shows in terms of tech and it shows in terms of interior design and overall drivability. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's damn close to it. it this truck can do everything. It can go off-road. We didn't do that much because, well, it had 22-inch <laughs> wheels or yes. something like that. Yes. 
really not the best for off-roading, but when we get our hands on another one that has a little bit more of an off-road friendly setup, you bet we'll be taking it off-road and testing it as well. Great torque, great power. Speaking of off-road, one more word, which is a home run for Ford, I think, yeah. is tremor. Tremor is a big word. It's yeah. their latest, uh, well, it's been around for a little while now, for about yeah. a year. Uh, it's their off-road package. The Super Duty has a Tremor package currently available for sale. Right. The Ranger Tremor is coming next month. That's correct. Or within a couple of months, mm -hmm. uh, in January or February. Um, then F-150 Tremor is coming too. Now, now, I would say that the Tremor package is sort of this higher end off-road package that sits between your FX4 and your Raptor. Mm -hmm. It's like right in between the two. I would agree. W would you agree? Yes. Yeah. So those are the home runs yeah. for Ford. All right, so let's keep it going. So next brand we're talking about for trucks is Nissan. Yeah. Are you ready for this? Yes, please. Okay, so Nissan, let's start once again with unforced errors. And uh, this has kind of been one of my frustrations this year too mm -hmm. <laughs> with Nissan is their rollout of the next Frontier. Where is it? Oh, I'm so frustrated about that. <laughs> you have to understand, I love the Frontier. The old Frontier, the old, old, old Frontier. Going all the way back to when they were known as, you know, anything but Frontiers. Regular Datsun pickup trucks, 760s, all that stuff. Guys, what the hell? Bring it out already. It's been a prototype for a long time. We already know about the powertrain, which that in itself is a question because, it, first of all, good powertrain. Yes. We got a chance to test it. Andre tested it quite a bit in this kind of filler truck, which is the old body, the old um, design, but it has the new powertrain. And it's just a one-year thing, supposed to be a one-year thing, until we get the new, all-new truck. Um, so Nissan is in the middle of this kind of rejuvenation, right? The entire company, right? right. They, they, they even updated their logo. So the Nissan logo with the little like circle. It. Um, is a little different now. It looks a little little techy and it's a little bit more you know modern techy. I yeah. agree. As far as trucks are concerned, right? They have the Titan. It's been refreshed for 2020, which is good. Mm -hmm. It's been updated. The Frontier, I think, I, if it was me, I would have shown uh, like a concept already. Something. Something. Yes. Something. They they they've given us silhouettes dark images with like LED Yeah, you can see the things. headlights, but that's, that's not enough. It's, that's too much of a tease because it's been too long. Throw us a freaking bone. <laughs> All right, dude, but let's talk about the home runs for Nissan, and I can think of two. Okay. Uh, first, they just revealed the 2021 Nissan Armada, which has been completely refreshed. It ha not only did they reveal it, but we were one of the first to actually get our hands on one. I mean, they really knocked it out of the park. It's way different from what it was before. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's special, it's macho. What do you think? Well, here's a couple things. First of all, it looks better in person. I, I already know that some people are like, oh, it kind of looks Fordish or whatever. Mm. When you see it in person, you'll, you'll realize it looks a lot more like a truck. You see the old Nissan Armada looked a little bit like the Pathfinder. It was kind of soft and rounded. And this one looks a lot more butch. It definitely has a lot more character to it. What they did was they completely redesigned the entire front clip and the entire rear clip. Uh, we're talking the hood, the front fenders, the entire front bumper, in the back, the same basic thing, right below the window, the tailgate, all of that is different. So all of that stuff's been redone to look a little bit better, but on top of that, you actually get a little tiny benefit, a slight, slight increase with your approach and departure angle. Yes, and also, of course, the Midnight Edition is brand new. Mm. Um, it was there on the Titan before and some other vehicles. Now the Armada has it. Uh, they kept the powertrain the same, but I think for their flagship, this is their flagship. Oh, I did. Um, SUV, and it's the most expensive one for Nissan. And I think they did um, enough. Uh, we have we actually we can't talk about driving impressions until about another day or so. Right. Uh, but uh, I want to say that even though they kept the seven-speed auto and the V8 engine, uh, I think this is a home run for them. It's a solid platform. And I want to add one more thing really quick, which is the fact that right now it is the 2020 is in its class, one of the least expensive vehicles out there. It's actually quite a bargain. Now, Nissan has announced that they will have an S version of this in 2021 of their new 2021 Armada. That'll be the value leader and it'll be their least expensive version of this truck, meaning that you guys probably get a pretty good deal on a vehicle that, frankly, 
isn't out there a lot and it's a shame because it's really well screwed together. It's a solid truck. Yes, and the second home run I just want to mention, um, and uh, we don't have to talk about this in detail mm -hmm. because we have before, it's the Titan. Oh, yeah. I think uh, they redesigned it in 2020, now it's 2021 model year already for this truck. Um, I think they really knocked it out of the park. Yes, it's, it may not have you know all the top specs right um, in the class, but I think in general, with the powertrain it's got and the nine Wonderful speed. Wonderful powertrain. Rrr. Yeah, one of my favorite engines, that 5.6 liter V8, absolutely fantastic. And you did the full review on this uh, latest Titan on TFL Off-Road. That's right, I did a huge review on it, and it's, it's a proper truck. It's just, it's so close to perfection, but it just needs a couple things. It's still not perfect. Let's switch brands. Yes. Again, uh, talk about Ram. Ram truck. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the unforced errors. Um, and this has to do, well, actually two things. Yeah. Uh, the first unforced error I think I have to bring up, it has to do with their brand new TRX truck. Oh, it's, okay. You know the TRX, right? I mean, <laughs> no, after enjoying my, yeah, yeah, I know the truck. So yes, so the TRX is awesome. It's, it's a super truck, 702 horsepower. It's a true Raptor competitor. It's incredible. It's got the suspension, the interior, but, but it's not here. <laughs> it's, where is it? So, so every year TFL truck and TFL studios is very fortunate, right? Because we have the supporters and listeners mm -hmm. like you guys, we can buy one or two trucks brand new. Yep. And we order the TRX for the upcoming year. Right when we, the ordering was started. Yes. Yep. The Super Duty is sold. We sold it on TFLbids.com. Mm -hmm. Boom. Done. Uh, we don't have it yet. And it's only, we only have two weeks left in the year. Yeah. And then, we have to get it because of tax reasons. We were told initially that we were supposed to get it before the end of the year, that it, we would be able to put it under the Christmas tree, and that's probably not going to happen. Uh, yes, and so I know Ram is working very hard on this, Yes, but I think we're not in, alone, right? No. A lot of businesses and a lot of you know, other companies who review trucks or just celebrities who want new trucks um, do this for tax reasons. Andre wants a new truck. I'm not a celebrity. You're a celebrity, bro. Uh, anyway, so the second unforced error is Ram does not still have a mid-sized truck. Where's the Dakota, folks? Where is the Dakota? Yeah, now, look, I know a lot of you guys are saying, well, wait a minute, FCA already has a mid-sized truck with the Gladiator. Ah, the Gladiator is a Jeep product and it is a proper off-road truck. I'm talking about an entry-level truck that the regular Joe can afford. I'm talking about something that can not only compete with, but take it to the other manufacturers out there who have vehicles that are sub $30,000 vehicles. Where is it? We know that you guys have been developing a Dakota for a while or something like a Dakota may not be called that if they ever come up with it. But we have a mid-sized truck that we know that you guys are working on and it could be anything it, at this point. It could be a SUV base, basically a um, car based. Crossover base. Crossover base, sure. if you want to call it. Uh, pickup like the Ford Maverick that is rumored to be built and also the Honda Ridgeline and the Hyundai Santa Fe or Santa Cruz. Or it could be a little frame based pickup truck. Either way, it's not out and it should be. We need it. You guys need a value proposition in this field that's empty. So the CEO of FCA, uh, Mike Manley, right? Yeah. He hinted at this, right? Oh, he did. In several meetings. He did it in a manly way. <laughs> very, very manly. But they also have been merging with Peugeot, mm -hmm. right? And Stellantis company is being born. Um, still, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, competitors are taking their lunch, so to speak, yeah. because there is nothing. And they could have done it very simply, right? I know it's a bad year. They could have done it in a way, hey guys, here's a little silhouette, or hey guys, here's a little concept we're wondering about. Uh, Give us something. Give us a little bit of hope, a ray of sunshine in our dismal lives. Hey guys, <laughs> this is coming. We're not going to tell you much about it. Ford pulled this several times with a silhouette or just a, a logo of a damn horse and people were thrilled. Come on! Help us out! So there you have it. A uh, home run for Ram has to be the TRX. Oh my god, it's a There monster. is no question, there is no answer. What a beast. Um, TRX is it. It's the ultimate truck right now. It's not, well, it's expensive. Mm. It's, <laughs> it's inefficient. A completely inefficient. But uh, taking those things uh, aside just for a second, 
it's a true Raptor competitor, adjustable suspension, uh, special interior, like we were saying, uh, just a monster truck. I drove it, I loved it. You jumped it, you drove it. I loved it. Uh, <laughs> so, Took it around a racetrack too. Yeah, not a good idea. But, but the thing is, I think I could simply say this, for off-road trucks, it's sort of like the Lamborghini of off-road trucks. An irony here, I know they don't own Lamborghini. All right, the Ferrari of off-road trucks. The thing is, is that it is so overbuilt. It is just such an insane vehicle. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but at the same time, if you just drive it on, you know, on the streets, it's actually a comfortable ride. It handles just fine. It's just a really well thought out, well designed, serious off-road maniac. Yes, and it's got the cred and the specs to prove it. Everything about yes. that truck is true that you've read. All right, yeah. let's switch brands once again. Let's move on. Yes. Next brand is Toyota. So let's mm -hmm. talk about the unforced error that I think uh, is there. And it's the Toyota Tundra rollout, the next generation Tundra. Uh, I, I think we're going to sound like a broken record at this point. But, yeah, but, but still. Uh, so the Tundra. So, okay. So. First, we were expecting it like at the beginning of this year, yes. in February, right? Um, that's, it was strong rumors that it was coming, and then it was being delayed. Well, and let me rephrase that. Maybe it wasn't being delayed. Maybe this was the plan all along. You know how methodical and slow Toyota, did, you know, They're very is? practical. They're very pragmatic. Yeah, so, so they, they will continue probably to, to be very, very careful, uh, you know, with every part they design. And so we're seeing a lot of this. We're seeing a lot of prototypes. We have several videos about this. And oh, all over truck. the country, they're testing them. Yeah. And they've been testing them for years. For yes. years, they've been testing this truck. Yeah. So I, once again, we need to see something solid. There was a leak, right? There was a little bit of a leaked information. A little bit. Yeah. At this point, you know, I'm hoping we see something in February, <clears throat> right? If we don't, then... I don't know. I'll be up, I'll be upset. So the rumors are that there's going to be a twin turbocharged V6, uh, perhaps a hybrid system similar to the direction Ford has gone. Other people are saying, no, 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 no. They're going to stick to the V8 and they're just going to downsize it and make it more powerful, but smaller displacement. Other people are uh, some crazy rumors about hydrogen. It doesn't matter. I don't care about the rumors at this point. I just want the damn truck. Here's the thing about it. We've been seeing leaked pictures we've been seeing leaked this and leaked that we've been getting leaked information we think that over the past few months toyota would have been best suited to bring out at least a concept and say it this is similar to what we're working on here you go have a great 2020 we know it's a sucky year that would have been awesome once again it's a question of giving the fans something to hold on to and we're not getting that and the tundra is the oldest truck in its class by far yeah, it's still a solid truck. You it's know, a solid-ass truck. give it credit. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, and, and also, uh, I'm seeing what I think is worrying is that the sales of the Tundra are kind of declining because there are new competitors in the game, right? Yes. Um, and not just the year. It's not just because I, this is my interpretation of it, right? Um, and also the Frontier sales are going down. You know, mm. we talked about the Frontier. Yeah, that's right. Um, so those are challenging things. But let's talk about something good with Toyota. Oh, yeah. Uh, home run. I think no matter what, which, which always impresses me, is that Toyota Tacoma is still the sales leader and continues to dominate, you know, the midsize segment. Yes. Yes. It's being challenged. It is. But it's still number one. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but I want to add a, an additional home run to that, and that is the Toyota 4Runner. Between those two trucks, considering how old they are, especially the 4Runner, the fact that they're still selling them... Every other damn car in Colorado is a 4Runner. I mean, yes. my, my, two of my neighbors have them, and then down the street, another two. They are super rugged, very reliable, very good snow trucks. And Toyota's just like, well, why mess with a good thing? So they're selling more of them. And here's the thing about both the Tacoma and the 4Runner. The fact is, is that they look good. They're, they're really good looking trucks there. They're very macho, and they have a lot of interesting accessories and some great color combinations. And they were smart about how they did that. I don't think it worked on the Tundra by updating it, but it certainly worked on the Tacoma and it certainly worked on the Forerunner by adding, and in some cases subtracting, uh, some cool little uh, Toyota aftermarket components like, I don't know, a desert air intake that they had and they got rid of. Uh -huh. um, they produced a vehicle 
you know, two vehicles that really resonate with fans, both Toyota fans and people from the outside who are like, mm, I like the way those things look. So you can't really go wrong with that. But as we know, eventually they will have to be updated. Yeah, and it's still impressive. Like you said, Forerunner sales are pretty strong. Yeah, they're very strong. Tacoma is still there on top, although the, the new Ford Ranger, the Chevy Colorado. Jeep Gladiator. The Jeep Gladiator are all fighting it and mm. fighting it very well. Um, so, so that's very impressive. Let's move on now. Speaking of Jeep, let's go to Jeep. Um, and this is kind of a now ironic thing that I think happened. But I don't think it was funny when it was happening. I, I'm laughing now, but back when, when it was happening, we actually knew a couple people who went through this. And what we're talking about is their rollout with the Jeep Gladiator. Specifically, Andre, take it. Launch edition. Yeah, launch so edition. So they announced this, right? Uh, this was very specific. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be a very sp uh, special Jeep Gladiator with all the options, special badges, special wheels. For the very first people to buy it. Yes, and people put their money down. Put people, you know... Uh, got in line, but the launch edition wasn't the first available. No, the regular Jeep Gladiators, normal Jeep Gladiators came out first. This vehicle was delayed. So imagine putting $60,000 down on this vehicle, expecting to be the very first in your neighborhood to have a Jeep Gladiator and having to wait until your buddy down the street is driving around in a base model Gladiator laughing at you as you're waiting for your delivery. They were not delivered on time and they were not only delayed, but they were super delayed. Big problem. Yeah, so uh, that's kind of an unforced error, mm. uh, definitely. Uh, but I think what Jeep did really well, especially this year, it's the new Gladiator Mojave. It's a, it's a new brand, sub-brand for them, right? Just they like have, Rubicon would be. Yeah, they have the Rubicon already. The Mojave brand is more for desert running, high-speed running. Right. Um, special suspension still. Um, slightly different right height, a little bit taller than the Rubicon. Um, and just looks really good with macho with that hood scoop, right? Even though I think that's fake. Uh, yeah. in, in that model. Um, anyway, but still the Mojave I think is a home run and I'm actually seeing them around town here. Which is really funny because we're not, we're we're not, not exactly, in the desert. Not really desert. No, no, we're, we're snow country and, and you know, rock Mount, crawling. Mountain country. Right. But the thing about the Mojave that I really like is the fact that it's kind of a do everything vehicle that gives you one of the best rides I've ever had in terms of actual ride in a Jeep. I think it's a nice floaty suspension. Very comfortable. Um, it's a usable side. Yes, you do lose some payload and some towing, but that happens with that squishy suspension. It happens with any type of off-road truck. But in terms of its capability, its overall looks and personality, it's a great truck. It has an updated interior with a little bit more little bolstering. Bit, right, uh, right, right, right. On the, on the seats. All, all together. So, so I think that's a home run for Jeep. And I think uh, I hope they continue with this yes. uh, trend. You know, they also have the plug-in hybrid in the Wrangler. Yep. That I'm hoping might transition. I'm pretty sure we're going to see it in the Gladiator. Uh, Hemi, please. Yeah, the Hemi would be nice also to see in the Gladiator. But they just put in the uh, diesel, which we drove, and it was it was efficient. Yeah. Yeah. Not you know not a lot of payload, but mm. still a, a nice package as yep. far as efficiency is concerned. Uh, you're Ab absolutely right. Very true. Let's move on. Let's switch brands a little bit, completely. <laughs> a little bit, uh, completely. Uh, let's uh, talk about Bollinger. <laughs> yeah. what, what, what are you chuckling? Okay. Uh, you, you, you go ahead. Well, first, let's talk about their unforced error, which uh, is price in one way, I would imagine. Wouldn't you agree there? So let's just introduce Bollinger just briefly. All right. All right. So it's a brand new uh, startup company. They've been around for a couple of years now, at least two and a half, three years. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are focused on an off-road electric only SUV and truck. They also call it the sport utility truck, which is like an SUV that can be converted into a truck, right? For those of you who don't know, they have a very similar design um, to old school Land Rover Defenders. Uh, very squared off, very, very squared off, very angular. Yes. Um, utilitarian throughout. And then, you know, and then we've done several videos. I actually was fortunate enough to go to their facility twice. in Michigan. Twice. Yeah. And actually see them in person and actually see the prototypes and touch them. And I was very excited. And then I found the price, uh, which was 125000 bucks. Damn! And then just recently, just a few days ago, they, uh, they revealed these 
uh, pre-production, uh, production-ready uh, vehicles. Uh, what do you think? Ah, no, nice. No, bueno. Uh, I know it's utilitarian. They actually do a lot of stuff with storage and everything else, which is really cool. But in terms of the unforced error between the price and the way it looks, I'm sorry, I just, I'm not a big fan of its design. I just think it looks too simple, almost like they weren't trying, but that's just me. Dude, I, I would have to disagree. Uh, yes. So the simple kind of uh, guy from Russia in me mm -hmm. uh, says that squaredness is good. It's simple. Well, I like it personally. I, 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 I think so. And first, and, and the second thing is, um, they changed a few things around. It may look similar and very boxy, uh, but they made the front end uh, hatch wider. They were able to move the, some of the intercoolers for the you know the electrical components. They separated the bed, so the bed is now separate. Mm -hmm. um, so you can remove it altogether if you want to. They made the doors a little bit bigger for the rear and the glass bigger so a tall person can get in. So they made those tweaks, uh, but what I'm stuck on is the price. I think that's, that's really- an incredible price. It's, uh, we're saying it's an unforced error, but that's the nature of the company, right? They're mm -hmm. a small company that doesn't have humongous corporate backings, uh, at the same time, low production volumes, right? Uh, it's a toy for the rich, Andre. I mean, it really is at $125,000 for a base model. That is an extraordinary amount of money. And now, I understand that some of you guys are like, well, you know, I mean, the tech is really good. It is. I, I'm not disagreeing with that. If this vehicle really does come to, to you know, Colorado and if it's a real thing, I, I'll be delighted. But it, you put it out of reach for anybody who is, you know, a hardworking Joe who might be interested in an electric vehicle. This thing has crazy utility. You can actually put down all the seats, the bulkhead and everything, and run a piece of lumber almost all the way through it. I mean, yeah. it does all these you cool things. You can remove things. the roof panels. Yeah, yeah all that there, stuff. There's those really cool stuff, but it's incredibly expensive. And that yeah. we mentioned that with other vehicles, and we will continue to mention price. Believe me, that's going to be a returning theme in more ways than one. But I just think that the price is just too steep. I would agree. But I think the home run for Bollinger is still that they're sticking to their guns and making this kind of very utilitarian, very simple design. That's just my opinion. I know not many no, no, people I, agree. I, I think it's extremely utilitarian. I won't disagree with that. And I like the mechanicals. The fact is this is not your average EV truck, yeah. which has, you know, two electric motors or whatever, and that's it. This has got a lot more going on with hydraulics and other stuff. Yeah, too. hydraulic suspension, height adjustable, right. all unique frame, all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's move on to another electric uh, vehicle manufacturer, Rivian. Mm -hmm. So Rivian. Uh, you know, I would say a, kind of a similar problem that we've seen with some of the rollouts, right? So that's an unforced error for many reasons. You know, of course, you know. 2020 definitely did not help them. Very complicated, but they, you know, unveiled the Rivian R1T and R1S vehicles. Mm -hmm. Everybody loved it. Then, you know, the hype kind of died down. They've been working to productionize them. Yep. But they're not here yet. No, they missed their, they missed what everybody expected would be their deadline to bring these vehicles to market. And what is a shame is that we know that they work. A friend of ours, Emmy Hall, raced one at the Rebel Rally this year and had some success with it too. She, she enjoyed it quite a bit, but it was also used in that uh, show with Ewan McGregor, right? Long way up. Long way up. Yes, so it has, has a good kind of advertisement and you know, uh, public awareness, mm -hmm. uh, I would say. So a lot of people understand it's coming. Uh, they're saying June now, June 2021. Mm -hmm. There's a configurator online. It's still a very expensive truck. Yep. Uh, starts at around, what, $69,000 to $70,000. That hasn't changed. They always had that price, right, basically. Right, right, right. Uh, but then I configured one with a kitchen sink, this little camping unit. <laughs> with an actual kitchen sink. In it. Actually, uh, at about 90000 plus. Yes. So once again, it's a very high-end, very capable vehicle that's not here, that's really unforced. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I will say, though, that I much prefer this design over the Bollinger design. I think it's I, brilliant. I, I love it. The cool thing about uh, electric trucks, by the way, is the fact that there are so many options with storage and being able to put things in places that you normally wouldn't be able to use. So I really do like that. 
Uh, but yeah, the Rivian is quite expensive. Yeah, expensive. And of course, you know, the positives, like we mentioned, you know, people understand it's coming, they know mm -hmm. it's there. So at least they have that and they have huge backing from big, big companies, Ford, Amazon. Amazon, yeah. Uh, some other big corporate uh, backers. Total so. of billions of dollars. And that really did help them get going. And bear in mind that during uh, the pandemic, on the early days, they were one of the first companies that really kicked it into high gear. They moved all their staff back home and had them remotely work. And not easy to, to, to develop a whole truck. A brand new vehicle. Yes. A brand new vehicle when you're sitting at home having to sit at a small terminal. So, you know, kudos to them for trying, but at the same time, unfortunately, it's not here. Yeah, and it's coming next year, of course. Let's move on to another manufacturer, but a slightly different uh, issue. Uh, I'm talking about the Tesla Cybertruck. Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, yeah, so it made huge splash, right? The, uh, the unveiling of it about a year ago was insane. Mm -hmm. uh, but the enforced error, and I think in, in many people's minds, is the design. Yeah, so let's talk about the design briefly. Um, there are a couple things you need to keep in mind. Now, first of all, we know that there are people out there who love it and hate it. It's polarizing on both sides. But recently, we caught a video uh, featuring uh, Frank Stephenson, who is a renowned designer. He's worked with BMW, Mini, Alfa Romeo, Ferrari, Lancia, McLaren, you name it. And he is, some people consider him one of the most prolific designers out there. And he definitely does have a great way of speaking. I highly recommend checking out his video. But one of the things that he was talking about with this design is the fact that it's sad. It's depressing. It's a monolithic mm -hmm. design that doesn't give you any joy whatsoever, internally and externally. The entire look of the vehicle is dystopian. It gives you the idea that the future is going to be a horrible place to live. That includes the bulletproof glass. There are a lot of problems with this design. Actually, there's some problems legally with this design too. We'll get to that in a second. But what do you think, Andre? So, well, when I first saw it, when it rolled out on stage, and actually our, our very own Roman Micah was there in he person. He was there. Um, and actually bringing us information uh, from that event, which was pretty cool. Um, I was in shock. I, I, I expected, um, in my mind, of course, something squarish and rectangular. Maybe a little bit more truck-like. Uh, a very truck-like. I, I, you know, I, I don't have this impression that every truck needs to look the same. It's mm. not, you know, I'm open-minded. But when I saw the triangular shapes, it was just shocking. Uh, but I kind of agree with Frank, you know, the designer you were mm -hmm. mentioning, because, because the whole minimalist feature, I mean, Teslas are usually minimalist in, in, in their design. But they kind of have some joy and some whimsy to yeah, them. Yeah, if you look one. at their cars, they're very fluid, right? Mm -hmm. They're kind of rounded. Right. This thing is big and it's heavy and, and it's not very even useful as a truck in many That's ways. That's the other thing. I mean, talk about utility. I mean, you and I both agree that being able to reach into the back of a bed is really important because that's kind of the whole point of a pickup truck, being yeah. able to have a bed that you can use. This doesn't really have that. No, it's got a triangular buttress in the back. Yeah, I know you can open the tailgate down and do this stuff, but you can't really approach it from the side. It's really strange. And then you're sitting in this uh, hardened steel, like a, almost like a stainless steel alloy yeah. construction that they're talking about, bulletproof glass potentially. Potentially. Uh, now, real thick, quick on the bulletproof glass. Yeah. In order to get Department of Transportation uh, certification, among others, you have to be able to extract somebody in the case of an emergency, if there's a crash or something like that. Bulletproof glass is not exactly something that is easy to penetrate <laughs> to remove somebody from a car, nor is its overall shell design for with the jaws of life. Am I correct? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's very, uh, very stiff. I mean, trucks, it's good to have a stiff chassis, right? For many, many reasons. Stiffness for, is important. For, for weight carrying capacities I'm talking about, mm -hmm. Nathan. Uh, towing, suspension setups, all that stuff. But, but if it's, you know, if in case of an accident, nobody can reach you, that's not a, that's not a good that, thing. And that could be a major thing. Now we do hear that they might soften the design, change a few things on there. We are hearing a lot about that. So we'll see in the future. And they're building a factory right now in, in Texas, in Texas, yeah. in Texas. So that's happening. And I think a home run for the Cybertruck is that I think recently uh, Elon Musk mentioned something around 600,000 reservations. And this is a hundred dollars per reservation. Yeah. Um, and many other manufacturers started doing that too. 
right? You can pre-order, I don't know, even a Bronco now these days. Yeah. Um, for a small amount of money. So, so that's, I mean, they made, a, I mean, 600,000, if you think it's 100 bucks for each reservation, they 60, made millions. 60 million. Yeah. Now, at least. Add to that the fact that this is actually a fairly affordable truck if you look at the base models. What they're currently saying in terms of price, it undercuts almost everybody else on this list who's building an EV truck. Kudos to Tesla for that. Yes, so that's, you know, let us know what you think, of course, in the comments below. We, we always follow your comments on the podcast and, of course, on TFL Talk We may channels. occasionally ignore them if they're really mean, but... Yeah, or we, we may not respond to everyone. <laughs> um, we really do read a lot it, of the comments. We all read them. Um, Hyundai is next. Why Hyundai? Okay, here we go, guys. So what, what? Let, me, let me take you back <laughs> a half a decade ago to the Detroit Auto Show. Now, we were one of the first to bring you a video presentation on this vehicle, and it is the Hyundai Santa Cruz. Back then, it was a, a, a concept, and it was a really cool looking concept. Really quickly, um, at the unveiling, what they did was they had a piece of PVC pipe or something like that inside the uh, curtain that was covering it, and so it looked like an SUV, and nobody was really interested in it. But a friend of mine kind of hinted to me, going, that is actually a truck, a pickup truck type thing. No, it's, it's not an SUV. So fortunately, Roman and I had just enough time to set up our cameras and get ready to go. Sure enough, boom, there it is. Really cool looking concept pickup crossover thing. Um, that was a long time ago. And since then, all this hype, people were absolutely just screaming, give me this truck, right? I mean, how many emails did we get? Dude, countless. Almost every day we had an email. This was five years ago mm -hmm. and four years ago. And then people just kind of would, they didn't see any major news, so they lost interest. Fell off a cliff. Fell off a cliff. And then finally, now we're back and we're seeing prototypes. You know, we have a lot of stories. And you guys, thank you for sending us images. Mm -hmm. uh, we get images from you. All, I think, like five different people sent us Santa oh, Cruz images now. Yeah. So prototypes running around, but still nothing official. That's nothing a, that's official. A, that's an error. I, I it think. is, and I think that they waited way too long, and you know now it's sort of dying off again. You got to hit while you can when you got the good buzz going on, and they didn't do that, which is a shame. At the same time. There is a big positive. Am I correct? Yes, they're entering a new segment. I think that's a home run. Um, big time. And, and now we know they're serious because these look production ready. And almost. they announced it officially. Yeah, and they announced it as well. So that's goodness. Uh, Yes, it, it's still a crossover, right? It may have a unibody structure. Yeah, it, it may be related to you know some of the other crossovers that they have. Yeah, like the Santa Fe and whatnot. And the Tucson. It 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 doesn't look quite as big as the Honda Ridgeline. Maybe a little like, smaller. Yeah, it might be a little bit smaller. We're not one hundred percent sure because we don't have the measurements. But what we do know now, this is early on, right after that unveil. I was telling you about Hyundai actually brought me backstage with a few other um, journalists and said, listen, we want to know whether or not you think people would be interested in this truck. And I said, yes, if you can keep the price manageable, undercut Honda at the time, the Ridgeline, you know, was, was, that was out. And, but, you know, st keep it simple. Keep it some, uh, something that everybody can get their hands on. You know, it might be a big seller for you. And I think they may have done that. And they, they may have been waiting for the next generation of their platform. Mm -hmm. Who knows? That is possible. Because the Tucson has now been updated. You That's know, right. It, it's, it's out, and now this is based and on And the it. other thing is, is that, remember, the early days of the uh, Santa Cruz, they were talking about putting a diesel in it. They were talking about all these different types of powertrains. They were talking about a smaller version of it that actually had an extending bed, which was a really cool idea, by the way. Well, now the bed is covered. We don't know if it's extending no or, idea, or, or not extending. But we're pretty damn sure that they're not going to introduce a diesel in this model. The idea of a four-cylinder diesel in the United States, it just doesn't seem to work out over here, which is a real shame because it could be great for torque and uh, range. But what we are going to be getting eventually is this new truck, which means Hyundai as an automaker in the United States will have a vehicle, you know, sports cars, fairly large SUVs, um, small hybrids, electric vehicles, and now a pickup. Yes, and you brought up Honda. I did indeed. So we need to transition that, and that's the last brand mm -hmm. on our list. And Honda has recently updated 
uh, and created a, well a refresh for the Ridgeline. Uh, it's a, and it's a pretty comprehensive refresh. It's a whole new front. Uh, the overall look of it is much more butch. We'll get to the idea of, of what this looks like in a bit, but there's actually a problem first. Yes. Yeah, so one of the issues is they unveiled it what a couple months ago now, mm -hmm. right? And then we we're trying to judge kind of interest, and it seems like not many people know about this. Oh my God! Nobody knows about it. That's the thing. Their PR has sort of dropped the ball on this. We can't understand why because I mean it's not a horrible seller. Actually, it sells okay. That the sales over the past few years have been very, very stable all throughout. Yeah, and actually improving recently. Which is really crazy and considering think, what's going on. And I think Honda has always been very methodical about the Ridgeline. They uh, are almost holding the, you know, some of the demand. Um, you know, they know there is more demand, but they're not building quite as many. Maybe for whatever reason. They may uh, have a reason. Yeah, you know, believe me, we're the furthest thing from a think tank out there. So, so anyway, but, but they've updated it. Uh, not a lot of ads, not a lot of kind of public awareness. No ads, no public awareness. That's the problem. You guys don't know much about this vehicle. A, the general audience out there does not know a lot about this refresh. And it's unusual to us that the Honda sort of let this thing kind of just sit there and flounder. Yeah, and we also haven't been able to test one yet. So, mm -hmm. of course, those are the two kind of unforced errors in some ways. But the design has improved. I think that's good for the Ridgeline. It's I more think manly. It differentiates itself more from the Pilot. I Which think it, it needed it, to. It had to do that. Yes. Um, but I'm still a tiny bit disappointed because I wanted a little bit more ground clearance. Mm -hmm. I wanted a little bit bigger tire. I wanted a little bit more towing capacity. I didn't get that. Yeah, unfortunately, they haven't. They just recently introduced the new nine-speed transmission, so they have updated the its overall, you know, capability in that respect. So it's a little bit more efficient, smoother. But in terms of towing, which I believe is five thousand pounds max, that has not increased. It's no different in terms of its off-road capability because you know ground clearance and tire are pretty much where they were before. But at the same time, as a vehicle can be improved sort of incrementally, this has been improved. And I like the fact that they made it look a lot less like the Honda Pilot, which I think is really important. And then the other side of it is there's room for more improvement. So who knows? They might go up a level. But I honestly don't think we're going to see uh, towing ratings increase anytime soon. You know what soon. I want to see? I want to see a Ridgeline HD. <laughs> I want to see one ton axles on this bad boy. Yeah, one ton independent front and rear <laughs> suspension. That, that's going to be an interesting mix right there. I think that realistically, you know, a lot of people who, who swear by these have said the same thing. It more than does what they needed to do. They don't need to tow more than 5,000 pounds. A guy like me who's got a 1,200 pound trailer fully loaded. I don't need that much, you know, towing capability. Yeah. There's a market sit, for that. And we've towed with these before and they've been yeah. fine. Yeah. And they're very comfortable too. Very comfortable. That's so, probably the best thing about them. So finally, just taking a step back really quick before we end the show and looking at the industry in general, mm -hmm. right? So the truck industry for 2020, and we're hearing this from you guys as well. Yeah. Uh, the general kind of unforced air is that trucks are getting more expensive and too expensive, in fact. And it's not just the heavy duty trucks in the across and, the board. Yeah, we're talking mid sized trucks. All of them, not only are they getting more expensive, but what else, Andre? They're getting bigger. That may work for some people, but not for all people. Basically, if you think about it, if you look at the dimensions and capability of the current half ton trucks that are available now, that's heavy duty territory just a few years back. If you're looking at mid sized trucks, a lot of those trucks are damn close to the size of full size trucks from a decade back, which isn't that long ago. So their size is getting, in some cases, a bit much for some people, and their prices are just becoming astronomical. And, you know, every manufacturer, you know, they advertise those beginner prices, right? They advertise My them. truck starts at 28, and my truck starts at 25. But when you get down to it, and we've been ordering trucks recently, oh, yeah. uh, you know, just researching it and doing all this stuff, uh, as soon as you add like, you know, cloth seats <laughs> and a towing package. Or a half uh, decent stereo. Or a half decent stereo, all of a sudden the price goes up and up and up. Four wheel drive costs a lot. Yeah, a, a, lot of a, the, a grand, 1500 bucks, 2000 oh bucks, no, 3000 like bucks. Three, yeah. three fourths a grand. Yeah, and then you change an engine, boom. Oh, you, then you, you really. 
So, so yeah, we, we understand that. Also, the size issue. Uh, for me, it's not a pers- I, 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 I like a bigger truck. Yeah, you do. Uh, I live in a suburban area. I don't, I don't live downtown in a big city. So I have some more space. I have a driveway at my house. I'm pretty lucky. So for me, I love those big trucks because I can bring more stuff. No, you love them because you just like big, burly, mean trucks, and you just like to overdo it. Yeah, <laughs> mean, America. So, but, yeah. but but parking a truck like that, a big truck, or off-roading a truck like that, as we found out this year, mm. is difficult. That's true, and that's where I come in. I actually, I, I do prefer mid-sized trucks for stuff like that. Uh, I live in South Denver, but I mean, I'm I'm in Denver all the time. And I grew up in this. I grew up in Los Angeles. Having a monster truck, as awesome as they are, maneuvering it around, just going through a drive through a car wash, parking it, can be a real bear. And in traffic, they're not very easy because you just can't see anything. They're so massive. But, but, the, but the good thing is uh, we're seeing this you know, new current of you know, more compact trucks may be coming, right? Yes. The Santa Cruz, maybe even the Maverick, even though Ford hasn't said that. They haven't officially uh, said You know, other trucks like that, maybe a Dakota? Maybe, thank so, you. So we, we, I think we're seeing a need, and I think manufacturers will actually make those vehicles for more us. More people are, drive, are buying and driving pickup trucks than ever before. And it's entirely possible that we could see a full range of them and possibly even smaller ones. I wish they'd bring back mini trucks. Not only because they're cool, but because maybe people could actually afford them. Yes. Well, there you have it. Please add your comments below as always. Discussion is really cool. Uh, and go back to tfltruck.com and tfloffroad.com for all the latest. That's right. And one final thing, guys. Remember, we have TFL bids. And rumor has it, there's going to be a very well-kept, updated Hummer on there as well. My Hummer is there now. It's on sale. It's no longer a rumor. Uh, but also, no reserve. No. <laughs> I'm gonna um, buy your truck. I am I am rolling the dice on this one. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna buy your truck and I'm gonna do things to it, make you watch, and I'm gonna film it. <laughs> no, I, I don't wanna uh, get divorced. It's bad wow. enough when I got rid of the Suzuki. Okay guys, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Alright, thanks.